Yo, 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 what is up, everybody? Chris here from Fake Sports News, bringing you guys a long awaited video. The off season is finally over, and we are back, back, back at it again with content. So, of course, this is not what I'm doing today. The week one preview of Dempsey. Obviously, Dempsey's not here, so that couldn't be possible. Um, so that's the next video that you guys will see on the channel. Be sure to check that out. And if you haven't already, be sure to go show Dempsey's channel some love, like, comment, subscribe. Great dude. And, you know, the content duo. So can't say enough good things about them. And be on the lookout for that video. The vibes are back and the duo's here laughing and doing what we usually do. Uh, another announcement, I have made a GPT. So yeah, I as some of you guys may or may not know, I am a developer. Um, in addition to everything else I do, I'm VP of marketing in my regular job. But I also have a lot of skills as a developer. I'm near certified, uh, Postman certified, and I'm a full stack developer. So I'm pretty experienced, done a lot of work with AWS, been to a few of their uh, AWS Summit events uh, since I was like 16. So I've been doing this for a while. But anyways, I'm putting out a GPT, uh, compiling all the stats that I've collected since Modern Warfare. So over the last five years, I've compiled all the season stats as the seasons have gone along. And you guys know I'm an analyst, so I'm going to upload those to the GPT, uh, all of my information, and um, yeah, go from there. So if you guys need an indexed version of all the season stats from Modern Warfare on, I have that. And I'll be training it with tournament placings as well. Um, so yeah, it'll be a comprehensive uh, guide for looking at past performances from players, either stat-wise or in terms of just their tournament play, where they've placed. Uh, the placings will be spanning from the CDL and the CWL era, pre-CDL, of course. But the stats, in-depth stats, will just be CDL on. That's the only time I've been tracking it. So with all that out of the way, uh, let's get right into the actual video, which is the way too early CDL power rankings made by yours truly. Hope you guys like this graphic. If you have any feedback on ways I can improve it or things I did right or wrong, please let me know. And of course, kicking it off with the number one spot on the list. I'm not biased at all, but I have Atlanta phase up there. Uh, I think adding draws into the fold, former world champion with LA Thieves in 2021. Uh, I'm sorry, 2022, as well as um, just the team sticking together, that core three of Cell, Abizi, and Simp. They've never let up on the league. Uh, they've been the number one seed literally since the inception of the league, those three. Um, so looking at their league placement last year, let's go to the legend first so I can explain uh, everything in this graphic. So the CP equals the 2022-2023 season champs placement for that team. The league placing of the 2022-2023 season is the LP. The M1 equals the projected seed for major one, where I think the team will be come major one. And NA just means they didn't qualify for champs. So there's four teams to follow in that slot. So looking at our second ranked team and our way to early power rankings, we of course have the Toronto Ultra. Their champs placement was second. They placed second overall at champs. They got absolutely mollywhopped after beating New York Subliners in the winners' finals. If you guys haven't seen those highlights, those of course are on. What's the key to success? Why? Why did they wasn't even put up a fight there? Yeah, you know, um, we knew what they were going to come out and do. We know how they play. Uh, you know, shut down Hydra. The team's pretty ass. So you know. the pressure mounting. Can the young rookie do battle? No! I don't believe. Uh, I appreciate you guys. Um, no one could have shut me down today. I guess. <laughs> I don't think they could. Uh, yeah, I just feel amazing right now. Hey, yeah, you are on top of the moon, bro. Congratulations here. Let me scoot on down, move on down to the end. Can I get a The Bulldog is here. And I want to just take this time. You know, firstly, let me just ask you, Kismet. Just talk your talk, bro. How you feel about this one right now? I'm, I'm gonna keep it cool. You, there was an interview, you know, he, he talked his talk. Uh, I let the gameplay speak and it was a flawless sweep. And you can go and look there. Uh, I have highlights from the grand finals. I have highlights from winners finals. I have highlights from every series of champs. So if you miss anything there, or if you just want a recap of how the vicious ass beating of the uh, Toronto Ultra took place after all that shit the scrap we talked, then you know where to go. Your boy got you uh, good and ready for that. So looking at their league placing, the Toronto Ultra are fourth and the overall standings. And this season, I think they're going to be number two seed pretty much all year long. Similar to Cold War, they held that number two seed pretty much all season, and they finished as a number two seed, I believe. Pretty sure they did, if not, Subliners did. So looking at Subliners, speak of the devil, 
they finished champs first. Obviously, they are a 2022 world champ, 2023 world champions, excuse me. And Hydra is our reigning MVP from the subliners. So they were just a dominant team. They won three events um, and they're the de facto best team, even though it can be argued how good of a team they were given the major five grand finals uh, against FaZe or major four, whichever one it was, where it went down to game seven. And if Selenium looked a different way, maybe FaZe wins three chips that, I'm sorry, two chips that year. And maybe the rest of the year looks different. Um, but anyways, they placed third overall in the league. They had a great season. They were very consistent, consistently one of the better teams. And I've been placing third at major one. I feel like Toronto and FaZe are just a step ahead. Um, but Toronto, they were right there. They could easily win this event and just usurp everybody and restake their position as a top team. Um, defending world champs, hard to argue that they couldn't be seen as a top team coming into this. It's just, you know, FaZe being consistently the best team of all um, throughout the CDL always. Um, it's just hard to go against these guys. Their placing, I'm sorry, their average placing for the season standing wise is one. Like they've never placed below first. So um, consistency wise, just hard to put those guys in anything but first in most cases, right? And we haven't seen anything. So that's the easiest call of all time. Um, looking at our next team, we have Optic Texas. They placed fifth, sixth at champs. They had a rough champs. Um, this team, I will, in the sake of transparency, just say they've been having a rough go of it in scrims. Uh, they lost to Temp's team, which is a challenger's team, and they've just been not looking dominant like they were in years past. So, of course, looking at their league placement, they were the second seed overall last year. They had a lot of points, hell of a lot of points. They played really well all season, and that's why they were the number two seed going into champs. And then my projected seed for them going into Major 1 at the end of qualifiers, I feel like they'll be the fourth seed. They have some tough matchups, um, and I feel like their match against subliners mainly will be one of the deciding factors to make them the Major 1 fourth seed. Looking at the LA Thieves, this might surprise some of you guys, um, just considering how quote-unquote random this roster really is, but I have them as the seventh, I'm sorry, their champs placement was seventh, eighth. They did not have a good champs. They were the first team eliminated. Are they the first team eliminated, if not the second? But anyways, they placed fifth overall in the league, so they've always been around that fourth, fifth spot on the standings, as long as LA Thieves has been a franchise in CDL. And subsequently, I have them finishing the Major 1 qualifiers, probably the fifth seed. I feel like they are the top of the pack for the mid-teams. Um, Optic is obviously at the tail end of the Tier 1 teams, in my opinion. And then... Basically, the way I have it set up, if I was doing another tier list, I would have one through four in S tier. I'm sorry, I have I have one through three in S tier, four through seven in B tier. I'd say four and five in B tier, actually. And then I put Ravens, Breach, and Vegas in C tier. And then these guys in D tier, and these last two in F. I'm, I'm sorry, I put Mutineers, Heretics, Rain Slip, in D tier. And then Gorillas and F by themselves. So, oh, right. Let me get into rosters too. So FaZe, of course, I mentioned that they added Draza. They dropped Slasher. Slasher is, of course, now in the Boston Breach. We're on that in a second. Toronto Ultra, they dropped, of course, Hixie and picked up Envoy, which is a big upgrade. They're going to be a problem. Subliners, of course, surprisingly dropped Priesta. Then they picked up Sib, which is a huge upgrade for them. Um, Optic Texas, they, of course, as we all know, they picked up Pred. Um, as we were all expecting them to. They dropped Hook and Ghosty, and then they picked up Pred and, of course, Kenny from the LA Thieves. Kenny's a great player, so that's a great shot for them. LA Thieves, they completely squad wiped, and then they picked up Ghosty from Optic, Cami, and, of course, Afro from the Minnesota Rocker, and Joe Deceives from the LA Gorillas. The Carolina Ravens is Real, GodRx, Clayster, and their fourth escapes, and I'll post on the screen. But, yeah, they're a really solid team. Complete squad wipe, and they also move locations. What are we doing, Siri? Um, anyways, so the Boston Breach, they, of course, swapped everybody out. They did a full squad wipe as well. Uh, no, they kept they kept Snoopy from their chance roster, and they brought back Capsule, and they also brought in Slasher and Priesta. So interesting roster there. Vegas, they completely retained one player. They completely retained one player. They kept... Uh, Standy, and they also added Attach, Purge, and Nero to the roster. Seattle Surge, they actually did squad wipe. Um, they now brought in Rambo, I believe, is the GM, Hook, Illy, Abuza, and Arcides. So that's their four. 
Minnesota rocker is Lenz, who is an up and coming amateur player coming from Challengers. Uh, Vivid, who of course came from Boston Breach. Awakening, who also came from Boston Breach. And of course, Lamar Accuracy, who came from the Seattle Search, where he had been there for two years. Then we have Miami Heretics, which is a complete and total rebrand. Um, of course, they are the Florida Mutineers. Now they moved to Miami and now they're the Heretics. So they changed the city and the name, changed a lot. And they have Journey, Eric Boom, Metals, uh, Vehicle, and did I say Eric Boom? The fifth escapes me. I'll, I'll post it on the screen when it comes back to me. And then the LA Gorillas, we don't know what the roster is. It's speculated that it was Diamond Con, Estriel, and two other amateurs, but I'm not sure what that team's looking like. So anyways, back to brass tacks. Of course, the Carolina Ravens, they did not place the champs. They didn't even qualify. Um, their league placement, they were dead last in the league standings. And I have them as a six seed coming into major one. I feel like based on the qualifiers, I feel like they'll have a pretty good online performance. And I think they will be, excuse me, the sixth ranked team going to major one. The Boston Breach, they placed fifth slash sixth at champs last year. Uh, they were seventh in the league standings overall. And I have them as the seventh seed going into major one. Um, I feel like they're a pretty solid team based on scrim results, but they're not one of those top of tier two teams i feel like they're at the bottom of tier two if, if you will the vegas legion the absolute bottom of tier two in my opinion um they of course didn't qualify for champs they were so close 20 points away from qualifying seattle beat them in um their league placement was ninth obviously they didn't qualify for champs and top eight went to champs and i have them as the number one seed going into major one i'm sorry the number eight seed going into major one um that team i don't know what to expect from them i feel like this purge guy will be pretty good um imagine like he wins rookie of the year and like i look back at this and i'm like but uh yeah i feel like purge will be really good i feel like attached standy of course you know what you're getting from them and nero is nero great player um so i feel like that team will be very solid but i do think that teams with stronger compositions will beat them so that's why i have them as eighth seed i feel like they have a lot of upside but it has to be seen seattle surge another team i feel like has a lot of upside but just given recent performances from those three players, of course, that being Illy, Hoop, and Arcides, I'm just not too sure of how much faith to place in these guys. Um, this is really a proving season for all three of those players. They've had a lot of opportunities to prove themselves on not so great teams in some cases. And definitely in the case of Optic Texas, that team was just very fly by night, right? They didn't really have the chance to get the players they wanted. So it was just kind of thrown together. And Illy, it could be argued, suffered as a result of that. Um, so looking at their champs placement, they were fourth place last year. Uh, that team of Pred, Sib, uh, Mac, and of course, accuracy was great. Mac, of course, just taking some time off, I believe. So he's not even in the player pool this year. Um, but everybody else is on a great team, um, apart from accuracy, who's on rocker, which I'm not too sure about. Um, respectfully, I feel like rocker could be good, but it just, I'm not sure. Um, their league placement, they were eighth. Obviously I said they were 20 points ahead of Vegas, and that's how they knocked them out of champs contention. And going into major one, I think they'll be the ninth seed. I'm just not too sure of how good the Seattle Surge team will be. I feel like, like I said, these guys have a lot of upside, but the consistency in the last few years is leaving a lot to be desired. Our next team, Minnesota Rocker, just spoke about them a second ago. Vivid, Lens, Awakening, and of course, Accuracy. Um, I have them as the 10th seed going into major one. I just, based on scrim results, I'm not too big of a fan of this roster. Um, I'm not sure if it'll really gel or if they'll have to blow it up post major one or two, but my honest feeling is that this team doesn't make it very far because this comp just seems like it's not going to work for a number of reasons. Um, I feel like wake and accuracy kind of play similar. Like wake is not that much of a super fast mobile flex player so i don't know but anyways we'll see how it goes i have them as the 10th seed going into major one like i said they play seventh eighth the champs and then they shifted the roster up a lot uh they got rid of three players they of course got rid of beans uh kremp and who else was their main ar awakening right so um yeah, I mean, it's going to be an interesting year for Rocker. I feel like they'll have to maybe make some changes, but I think they still have an academy team, so maybe they can dip into their own challengers little divot and farm some uh, talent from there, excuse me, but not sure. We'll see. Miami Heretics, they didn't qualify for champs as the Florida Mutineers last year. They were the 10th seed overall. 
Um, I have them as, right, they're the 10th seed in the league uh, placings in 2022-2023. And I have them as the 11th seed going major one. I'm not sure what to expect from these guys. I know they just benched somebody. Maybe they benched, oh, Journey. That was the fifth person who I was forgetting. I think they just benched journey for eric boom maybe but I, I could be wrong but anyways i feel like this team with there being so many players on the roster everybody speaking spanish and that kind of capping their ability to get great talent there's only so many spanish-speaking players in the talent pool so that necessarily means that this has to work out um not a big fan of that move necessarily having four players that speak spanish means that primarily the next player that you pick up would also have to speak spanish if you go to replace people from challengers and you don't just use the substitute it was smart to field a five-man roster but if more than one piece is not great on this roster then you have a really big problem on your hands so enough like babbling that's why i have them as the 11th seed and looking at our last team in this ranking, the LA Gorillas, we don't even know what their four is, so I'm not even going to talk about that. They didn't qualify for champs last year. They were the 11th seeded team, and we weren't even sure if they were going to field a roster this year. The guard literally has one employee at this point, and it's the uh, GM slash everything. And she's obviously going to be overwhelmed being one person in an esports org that needs so many employees. Um, it's just going to be a rough season for those guys. Hopefully they can do something and make an amazing story out of it. But as it stands, we don't even know their roster, and the season starts in less than two weeks. So respectfully, I have them as the 12th seed going major one. Somebody's got to be the last seed. So yeah, guys, it'll spell wrap it up for me. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, be sure to go back and watch some highlights from the last season. I got a lot of them there. And uh, if you are looking for more content, I got some more content coming very soon. Of course, that video with Dempsey going over the week one preview. Uh, be sure to show that some love when it does come out. And if you guys haven't already, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you're brand new. Go play around with that GPT if you haven't already. I will put that in the description down below so you guys can go test that out. Give me some feedback on Twitter, uh, at Fake Sports for Fans. And yeah, let me know what you guys think about the season. If you have any different thoughts about how you think the season will go or anything of that nature, be sure to let me know in the comment section down below. And if you did enjoy this content, be sure to share it with a friend. If you enjoy any of the highlights that will be coming soon, please, please, please share those with a friend. I really want to get these highlights out to as much of the community as possible. I just want to be a community resource as an analyst and really just, I just want to improve the space. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, if you have any suggestions for content, please let me know and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Once again, this is Chris with Sports News and I'm happy to be back. Hope you guys have a great morning, noon, or night, wherever you may be on this beautiful planet, and enjoy all of the COD as it comes up in these next few weeks. We are finally back.